Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a quick look at uh, a recap of electrolysis, and then we're going to get into the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Okay, so first, a recap some key words that we really need to understand because we'll be using them as part of today's um, video. So, electrolysis, key phrase here, this, this helps us to understand it. So, the lightest bit is about breaking down using electricity. So, we're going to break down ionic compounds into simpler substances using a direct current. Okay. Next one are cations. Cations are the positive ions. For example, a sodium ion is a cation. Way to remember it, cats, I'm positive, I love them. Then you've got anions. Um, I always write it with a big N here, capital N, because this just reminds me they are negative ions. For example, here's a chloride ion as a cation. Redox, I'm gonna show you two equations here just to remind you about this. So redox is a combination of reduction and oxidation and this is all in terms of electrons so here we've got a cation Cu2 plus copper ion because it's 2 plus it needs to pick up two electrons in order to become copper with no charge this here is gaining electrons so this is an example of reduction if you're thinking how, how am I getting this remember oil rig and Aurig is oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So this is gaining electrons, therefore it's reduction. Let's have a look at the opposite side of this. Um, here's a chloride ion, and what we're gonna do is get this to turn into chlorine. So we need to lose this electron. So that electron is being lost. So here's a chlorine without the electron. Remember that chlorine is diatomic, so we need two of those, therefore I need two ions and that will release two electrons. Because this electron has been lost, this is oxidation. And then you can see we've got reduction and oxidation. So it's a redox reaction. Uh, final, final little bit to remember here is around um, the process of electrolysis. When we do this, we use graphite electrodes. And the reason we use graphite is two reasons why we use graphite. Graphite is inert. That means it's unreactive, so it's not going to take part in the chemical reaction. And the second reason is that graphite conducts electricity. And if you think back to the work we did on bonding, this diagram here should trigger some memories that graphite contains carbon. Carbon normally likes to bond with four bonds. In graphite, it bonds with three. Therefore, it's got a delocalized electron, which is able to move through the structure, and therefore it conducts electricity. So it's a good material to use for electrodes. So that's the introduction. We're now going to have a look at um, the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Okay, so if we're going to have a look at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions, then the solutions we're looking at are dissolved in water because they're aqueous. And we know that water has the formula H2O, and this is a water molecule. And this water molecule will ionize, form ions, and it will split into H plus ions and OH minus ions. We've seen this before when we've been looking at um, the work on acids. Okay, So the fact we've got it dissolved in water means that we'll have these two ions inside the solution as well. Just a reminder that the electrolysis setup, here's our DC um, electrical supply. Then we've got our two electrodes that are made from graphite. One of them is going to be the cathode, and the second one here is going to be the anode. If our electrolyte is going to be sodium chloride, in my example, and it's aqueous, this means that I will have sodium ions in, in here from the ionic compound. I will have chloride ions from the ionic compound. Because it's aqueous, if I go back to this, this means it's dissolved in water, then I will also have these two ions. So I will have H plus ions and OH minus ions. So here now, in, inside my electrolyte, I've got four lots of ions moving around. Let's take a look at the cathode. So if I come back to this bit, here's my cathode. Now remember, the cathode is called the cathode because this is where the cations are attracted to. In our previous work we've been looking at, cations we know are the metal ions. And when they get there, these metal ions undergo a reduction reaction. So the cations undergo a reduction reaction. So, for example, um, if we had a sodium chloride solution, like we've just seen, this 
So if I just look at the cations first of all, we will get sodium from the sodium chloride. It's going to be the cation. And because it's aqueous, we will get H plus from the water, H2O. So I will have two cations inside my solution. Now the question is, when they get to the cathode, because they're both going to migrate that way, which of these two is going to react first? Who's going to be the first one to go? Now to understand this, we have to look at the reactivity series. So let me just bring that into the camera view so you can see this. Okay. And the reactivity series you can see here, I want to highlight two, two parts for you. First part is that here is hydrogen way down here. So this is not very reactive material. And as you go up here, they get more reactive and I'm working my way up, working my way up. And here I get to sodium. So sodium is far more reactive than hydrogen. Okay, so sodium is more reactive than hydrogen. You need to remember that fact. We're going to come back to that in one moment. Okay, so who's going to react first? Well, we use reactivities, as I said, to help us do this. What's going to happen is my sodium ion, when it gets to the um, cathode, it is going to pick up an electron to form sodium. My hydrogen is also going to pick up uh, an electron to form H. Remember, H is diatomic, so it's H2. Therefore, I have two of those and two of those in order to make that equation work. Now, the question is, who's going to go first? Because they're both going to gain electrons, we need to think about this reactivity. Hydrogen, because it's less reactive, it's easier to make this gain electrons. Less reactive, easier to react it. Sodium gets there at the, to the cathode and it's thinking, you know what, I'm really reactive and very reactive. I don't want this electron. I want to stay an ion. Therefore, I don't want to gain the electron and become sodium. So it says, I'm not going first. I'm not going to react first. The hydrogen reacts first because it is the least reactive. So at the cathode, it's always going to be the least reactive of the two ions that will react first because we're forcing it to pick up an electron. Okay, and that's how we're going to work our way through this. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll come back to that a few times to really understand that information. Just to flash this back under here again. So you can see here that whenever we have a solution that contains hydrogen ions, any solution with these cations in, then it'll be the hydrogen that's going to react first, that's going to be the least reactive. But if we have hydrogen ions with any of these ions in, for example, copper ions, then the hydrogen is going to be more reactive and the copper will go first. So we just have to remember that hydrogen is not very active. All these metals are above it, but copper, hydrogen is more active than copper. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens at the anode during the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. And what you can see here is the anode is where the anions are attracted to. So remember, anions are negative ions. Then they've got extra electrons. That's why they're negative. They tend to be non-metal ions. And um, we are going to have an oxidation reaction. Therefore, they're going to lose electrons um, when they get there. Okay, they're going to lose that negative charge. Again, there's a challenge here because if we think about our example we've been looking at, and our example was using sodium chloride in an aqueous environment, then what we're going to have here is we'll have the chloride ion as an anion from the salt. And because it's aqueous, we will have the hydroxide ion. So which of these two is going to react first when it gets to the anode? To help us understand this, here's a little table. And I've listed all the halogens, they all have a single negative charge. And you notice each one of these contains one part. So we've got chlorine or fluorine or, or bromine or iodine inside there. So we've got one. Here, the hydroxide is an O and a H. So this has two parts to the iron. And this one here is sulfur, S and oxygen, but oxygen has four parts. So here in total, there are five. So if we just count the number of parts that each ion is made up from, we can see that as you work your way up this list, then the ions become simpler. And the way for us to remember this is the simpler the ion is, the less parts it has, the easier it is to oxidize. So in my example here, where I've got chloride ions or hydroxide ions, if I come to that one now, 
which of these two is going to react first. If I use this to help me, I know that this has got one part, this has got two parts, the simplest goes first, so it's going to be the chloride ion. So the reaction I would get is Cl minus, it's undergoing oxidation, so it's losing this electron. There's the electron released, being lost. Chlorine is a diatomic, therefore I need two chloride ions and I will release two electrons. And that reaction is oxidation because it is losing the electron. So this will react, the chloride ion will react first. If we have a, a look at another one here, a little bit more complicated. So would it be a sulfate ion, SO42 minus, or the hydroxide ion? Again, if, if I come back up to my table, sulfate ions contain five parts. So that's, that's quite a complex ion. Here we've got hydroxide ion, which contains two parts. So it's going to be the simplest. So it's going to be the hydroxide ion that reacts first. This is a complicated um, equation for this one, and you need to remember this one. I'm going to show you a, a quick way to, to work this out. I'm going to write another one of these next to it, okay? Just backwards so I can see what's going on. When these come together, they've got to create molecules with no charge. So these two um, come together by taking the H here, and this forms H2O. So that forms a H2O, which I know does not have a charge, therefore I'm getting rid of charges, that's okay. Here I've got OH minus, another hydroxide molecule. That, the O and the O can come together, and two oxygens come together makes oxygen. So O2, O2 covalent, no charge. If I, but I've got a charge left over, so I need another hydroxide um, ion to come along. And this will join with this to form, uh, oops, different colour pen, to form another water molecule which is covalent and doesn't have a charge. Therefore, if I now count this up, I can see that I've got one, two, three, four hydroxide ions, and they are making one, two lots of water, one lot of oxygen, and then I'm going to get one, two, three, four electrons being released in the oxidation reaction. So this equation here is the half equation um, showing how the hydroxide ion undergoes oxidation. And you need to remember that equation, it's going to be really important, or remember how to do this. What would I, what would I see at the electrode? I'd get water forming, but I wouldn't see that. But what I would see is bubbles of oxygen gas forming as that is produced and this reaction proceeds. Okay, so in this final part then, just pulling this all together, let's just go back to our example for the electrolysis of aqueous um, compounds. And here's our setup. We had sodium chloride was the electrolyte and it's aqueous. So in there we decided that we had sodium ions and chloride ions from the salt. And then we had H plus ions and OH minus ions fact it was water in the aqueous environment okay at the cathode we will then attract the cations so my sodium ion and my hydrogen ion are going to migrate so they will move in that direction and my chloride ion my negative ion and my hydroxide ion will both go towards the anode and migrate that way okay remember two of them get to the cathode only one of them can react and we said at the cathode it is the least reactive that is going to go first so in this example here hydrogen is less reactive so what i will do is it will pick up an electron to form h2 remember it's diatomic therefore i need two of those and two of those okay the fact this is gaining an electron means that that reaction is reduction and remind yourself okay that if i can collect this gas, I can do the pop test, I can improve that that is hydrogen gas being produced at the cathode. On this side, two, two anions arrive at the anode, only one of them can react. How do I decide which it is? It's the simplest. So this has one part, this has got OH, so it's two parts, so it's going to be this that reacts first. So my chloride ion is going to release the electron. Chlorine is also diatomic, so I need two ions release two electrons. This is losing electrons, so this is oxidation, because oxidation is loss. Chlorine, to test for chlorine, 
Again, you should remember this one. So you get yourself a piece of damp litmus paper and you put the damp litmus paper um, near to the chlorine gas and the chlorine gas will turn that damp litmus paper from blue to red to white. So it goes red because it's acidic and it goes white because it's going to bleach the, um, the paper because chlorine is, is a, a bleaching agent. Okay, so two, two gases produced, two tests to prove they're, they're happening there. And you need to describe those two tests in the notes that you've got to work on.